Hello everyone and welcome back to Orms TV. My name is Jess and this is the video where I tell you guys all the reasons why I think DSLRs are complete rubbish. Okay, I'm 100% joking and that was clickbait. I'm sorry. However, this is the video where I tell you all about my personal camera gear that I use to create images whenever I am not shooting for orms. Almost one year ago, I ditched digital completely and decided to start shooting exclusively on film. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how and why that happened, a couple of reasons why you should maybe shoot on film, and whether I think digital or film is better. But before we do that, we gotta go right back to the beginning. I've been messing around with photography since my teen years, initially on my mom's old point and shoot camera, and then later on using my dad's Sony DSLRs. I actually bought my first camera from Orms. It was a Canon 70D, and for a couple of years, I used that exclusively to take my photos, and then later on to make my videos when I started moving more towards cinematography. After taking a long break from shooting stills on my DSLR and almost exclusively using my iPhone for photography, I decided to start engaging in manual photography again in mid to late 2018. I had watched and read a bunch of interviews with my favorite cinematographer, Roger Deakins, where he spoke about how his documentary style film photography really had influenced his cinematographic eye. So I decided to take a page out of his book and start photographing again in order to improve my composition when I'm shooting a subject on video for work. I ended up doing two incredible photography short courses at Orm CTSP when I was studying cinematography there. And those really made me feel empowered to go out and experiment with finding my own style in my own time. I have always been so fascinated by film photography, but felt really intimidated by it. I wasn't sure whether I would be ready to commit to it as a medium of photography, as film does kind of have this reputation of being a little finicky and temperamental and kind of exacting. In order to see whether film photography might suit me, I decided to go out and do a few shoots, challenging myself to use my digital camera the way that I would if it was a film camera. So in other words, that means taking a lot of time to compose very carefully, no happy snapping and absolutely no chimping. To my surprise, I found that I much preferred shooting in this much slower paced manner and I decided to take the leap. I started looking for a film camera. My colleague, Rachel, who you you guys will know as the host of Orms Air, the Orms podcast, recommended an online analog photography store on Instagram called Algorithm Archive. I started doing a lot of research on the best 35mm film cameras for beginners and a lot of the articles I read and videos that I watched recommended the Olympus OM-1. Lo and behold, one in absolutely mint condition came up for sale on Algorithm Archive and I snatched it up before anyone else had the chance to. I bought my OM-1 with a 50mm f2.8 Zuko Olympus lens for a mere 2,350 Rand. The Olympus OM-1 was originally manufactured in 1972. It's famous for its small form factor, being lightweight and its big bright viewfinder. Unlike some other film cameras, it is entirely manual. It does have a light meter, but you can shoot without it. I actually have to shoot without my light meter because I haven't yet done the modification that converts the OM-1's light meter to work with batteries that are currently available. To do this, I use an app on my iPhone called Lux, which recommends exposure settings for me based on the environment that I'm in. When I purchased the OM-1, I was given a roll of expired Kodak Gold to try out, and after shooting my way through that roll and seeing the results, I immediately sold my Canon 70D and decided that from now on, I was going to shoot exclusively on film. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about why I prefer shooting on film to shooting digital, but before that, I feel like I need to put a big disclaimer over here. This video is just an opinion piece. The experience of shooting any kind of photography is extremely subjective. This is just what I like. There is no right or wrong here. Just do whatever enables you to engage in your art form in the way that makes you happiest. Reason number one, it keeps me 
present. Film photography is an incredibly manual process that forces me to focus on every little thing that I'm doing right now in that exact moment that I'm setting up a shot. It's almost like a meditation and I really love that aspect of it. Number two. It gets me out of the house. Since I took up film photography and before the lockdown started, I was spending almost every weekend out shooting with either my husband, my dad or my friends. Sure, perhaps this could have happened if I had engaged more with my DSLR photography. However, because I find film so much more inherently fun and mysterious, I'm actually more inclined to go out and shoot. I really love that for me, film photography has become this vehicle for me to go out and adventure and be a tourist in my own city. It's so much more rewarding to go out and spend a whole weekend shooting and exploring rather than spending it on the couch watching Netflix. Number three, the anticipation. In the marketing office at Orms, we often joke that getting a role of film developed is kind of like giving a present to yourself. It's always a surprise to see how your photographs have come out because maybe you don't remember what you shot, maybe you don't remember where you went, maybe you don't remember what you were trying to achieve with a certain photograph. It's always a surprise. And it's really nice to share that excitement of rediscovering your images and your adventures with whoever is around you when you get your role of film back. Number four, no post-production. I used to find the process of editing my digital images really taxing. I could always get them to look how I wanted them to, but it took me forever to get there. With my film photography, I almost never do any post-processing on them. I kind of let whatever happens in camera happen and that's it and I'm happy with it. And finally, number five is the community. When I started doing film photography, I joined a group of other analog shooters who meet up about once a month to go out on photo walks and little adventures together. We're an extremely diverse crowd and it's been so wonderful to meet new people, go new places, and to learn from other photographers who have so much more experience than I do. Now, maybe you've been considering taking the leap and moving over to film photography. So right now, I'm gonna go through a couple of reasons why you might want to start shooting on film instead of on digital. The first reason is that it forces you to really understand your manual exposure settings. There's this thing a lot of photographers do when they're shooting on digital where they take a couple of photos first to see if their exposure is correct. And every time you're doing this movement where you're shooting, and then looking down to check your exposure settings on your screen at the back, you're actually breaking your connection to the scene in front of you. We refer to this as chimping, and it's something that film photography completely eliminates because you don't actually have a screen on the back or any way of reviewing your images. Because you can't check your exposure, you're gonna have to take a lot more time to be really thoughtful about your settings and make sure that everything is absolutely right before you take the shot. And you will start doing this because, as you'll find out, every single shot costs money. Film photography has caused me to become a lot more confident in choosing my exposure settings and significantly more familiar with how the exposure triangle works. The second reason is that film photography will improve your composition. As it does with making you be really intentional about choosing your exposure settings, film photography also forces you to really consider the best perspective before you release your shutter. You only have a maximum of 36 shots per roll of film. That means you don't want to waste any one of those frames on a mediocre or duplicate composition. Particularly with street photography done on film, I found that you spend so much time choosing the right angle, setting up your shot and then waiting for that right moment. Not to forget, then there's also all the time it takes to develop and scan your film. The sheer amount of time that goes into creating a single film photograph means that each one becomes meaningful and precious. I have a distinct memory of every single film photograph that I've taken, what it took to compose it, where I was, what my intention was, and then actually having it and reviewing it afterwards. 
This link in my memory is due to how much time and consideration has to go into every single shot. Reason number three is that it can also be a lot cheaper to shoot on film. The startup cost especially is significantly less than digital. You can buy a full frame film camera with a relatively fast lens for only a few thousand rand. Where in the digital world is that possible? Sure, there is the ongoing cost of buying your film, developing it, scanning it, but if you live in a big city like I do, there's generally a lot of places offering really competitive prices on that and it ends up not being as expensive as you might think. Also, if you get really into film photography as my dad has done, you actually can end up developing and scanning and even loading your own film at home and that brings the cost down significantly. Also, remember you don't necessarily have to shoot on really expensive films like Ektar or Portra. Two of my absolute favorite films to shoot on and two that I've actually made some of my best images on are Kodakala 200 and Fuji Color 200 and those you can get for less than 70 Rand. By the way, if you shoot on analog, please, please share your favorite type of film in the comments down below so I can go out once the lockdown is lifted, get a couple of rolls of that and try it out. On another note about cost, you will also have to replace your DSLR or mirrorless camera significantly more often just because of the rate at which the technology changes and improves. Film cameras aren't being updated. That means unless they break in some irreparable way, you never need to replace them. Perhaps my fourth reason is a little subjective, but I personally think that film looks better than digital. If you have ever been on Instagram, which let's be real, you definitely have, you'll know that people are absolutely obsessed with trying to make their smartphone photos and video look like they were shot on film. That's because film looks incredible. Most of those presets that you'll find on Instagram or Instagram stories or even apps like Visco are actually based on existing film types. Certain digital cameras, especially those made by Fujifilm, even come with what they call film simulation modes, which are presets that attempt to mimic existing Fuji color film types. The nice thing is if you start shooting on film, you'll have access to the genuine article instead of someone's best imitation of it. A lot of film experts also claim that the dynamic range and the range of colors and their separation is so much better on film than it is on digital. I don't personally know enough about this and the technicalities of film to be able to vouch for that point. However, what I do know anecdotally is that I love the color and the luminance of my film photos so much more than the ones I was taking on digital. And finally, reason number five, film has this timeless aesthetic that digital will simply never be able to achieve. The colors, the grain, the softness, the texture, the ineffable quality of a film photograph. Digital photographs can be absolutely breathtaking. However, they will never have the character that a film photograph does. You can certainly try and make your digital images look like film, but the amount of post-processing that goes into that almost makes the whole thing untenable. So I guess this now leaves us with the logical question. Is film better than digital? And the answer is, of course not. Neither is better than the other. It is so personal. It depends on the subject. It depends on the application. But most importantly, it depends on what you want and what you enjoy. Photography, whether it is film or whether it is digital, is simply a medium for us to express ourselves to share ourselves and our perspectives and our journey with the world. It is merely an opportunity to play. I think we should really let go of this notion that there is a more right or a more wrong way to shoot and create images. If you're creatively content and empowered, I don't see why it matters whether film or digital is better. Perhaps let's spend a little less time debating this point and a little more time making art, yeah? Subscribe if you want to see me learning how to develop black and white film at home during lockdown. Trust me guys, it's gonna be interesting. Also, give this video a like if you would like to see us make a little more film-related content on Orms TV. I have so many ideas, guys, and I would really love to share them all with you if that's something that you would like. If you're interested in film photography, I've linked some videos and other resources that I have found really helpful on my journey 
down in the description below so you can go and check those out. But that is it. Thank you for listening and until next time, cheers.